Hello, my name is Dr. Denis, and in this video we're going to go over how to evaluate the P-wave morphology on ECGs. So what is the P-wave? The P-wave is the first deflection on the ECG followed by the QRS and the T-waves. So the P-wave is actually the atrial depolarization of the heart. A normal depolarization of the heart occurs from the SA node and it spreads cell by cell throughout the right atrium and then through the left atrium before it, it, it's conducted through the conduction system to the right and the left ventricle. So we normally evaluate the P wave morphology in terms of amplitude and duration. So let's think on some scenarios now when the amplitude and duration can be different. In a normal setting, the, the duration of the P wave is associated with how much it takes, how much in terms of time it takes for the depolarization to go from cell by cell all the way from the SA node to the left oracle. The amplitude is normally associated with the amount of cells or the size of the chambers. So normally if we have a dilation of the right atrium, the depolarization on the right atrium will prompt the P wave to be taller and this is also sometimes called as P, P pulmonale because it, it can be most commonly seen in respiratory problems but not necessarily only by respiratory problems. On the other hand, when you have an increase in duration of the P wave, it's normally associated with the fact that the left side of the heart is enlarged, so you have a dilation or hypertrophy of the left side of the heart, and then the depolarization goes cell by cell, but takes longer, longer to reach all the way to the left side of the atria. And because it goes cell by cell, it tends to delay the depolarization as a whole. So you might see a wider P wave or sometimes, as you see in another example, you might see a notched P wave because it represents the depolarization of the right atrium first and the left atrium second overlapped. Of note, we are talking about evaluating here the ECG following the Li Chu, which is this, this angle of the heart where the electrode reference in the lower left limb and negative electrode is in the, uh, the right forelimb. Okay? So when you talk about the size of the wave, if we are using a review and ECG at 50, that was recorded at 50 millimeters per second, which is the fastest speed that we normally use in practice, each one of these tiny little boxes here are um, have 20 milliseconds in time. So from here to here it's 20 milliseconds in time. A normal P wave in dogs should not be bigger than 40 milliseconds. So here we have an example of a normal P wave because it had exactly two boxes. If the length of the P wave is longer than that, it could be associated with left atrium enlargement. Why? possibly, but not confirmed, because we can see cases when the P wave is enlarged, but using other diagnostic tools, the size of the left atrium is normal. It's not a 100% correlation, so we should always take this with a grain of salt. Always confirm ECG findings with another diagnostic tool. As I mentioned before, in, in severe left atrial enlargements, you might see a notched P wave like in this example. Notched P waves are common, commonly found in horses, not necessarily with abnormal left atrial enlargements. Normal horses, normal ECG from horses can have notched P waves as well. In terms of amplitude, if if you have a sensitivity of your ECG of N, it means that every 10 boxes, 10 small boxes, are equal to 1 millivolt. So 10 boxes would be something like this, would be equal to 1 millivolt. 
In other words, a small box like this, it's 0, 1 millivolt. Okay, so 0, 1 millivolt in this case, we counted one and a half boxes here. This amplitude of this P wave in this example is 0, 15, which is normal because it can go all the way to 4 millivolts for dogs or uh, 0 0.4 millivolts for dogs or 0 0.2 millivolts for cats. Okay, again, if you have a tall P wave, over 4 millivolts in 0, 0 0.4 millivolts in amplitude might be associated with right atrium enlargement but is also you should also confirm this using other imaging techniques so in summary animals with left atrial enlargement we would see p waves that normally are wider or with a notch or you might also see waves that are taller because the amount of mass between the right side of the heart, the, the atria, and the left side of the atria, it's wider, it's larger, and sometimes you see hypertrophy of the mass. More mass, higher the waves. And in cats, we normally see enlargement of the P wave. And the right, right atrium enlargement, P waves tend to be taller than 0.4 millivolts for dogs and 0.2 for cats. Remember that these are not written stones, so always confirm initial findings in terms of morphology of waves with other imaging, especially echocardiogram where you can get precise, precise measurements of the heart. Thank you very much. See you next time.